Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Chad ECRC here, and this is part two of the reverb build by Impulse RC. So, got the frame together, everything is going together real smooth. Um, starting to work on the electronics. So, what I've done here, went over all the electronics that I'm using in the last video. So go ahead and check out the channel if you are interested in seeing what kind of motors and ESCs I'm using. Of course, you can see here Speedix ES uh, 30 HVs because I run 5S with caps on them. And right here on the reverb itself, we have the Joshua Bardwell uh, F4 flight controller which uh, is based off of a CL Racing uh, type design. I've had a lot of good luck with CL Racings after I got through some of the issues and started using uh, decent ESCs with them. So I have went through on the flight controller itself and I have tinned up all of my pads. Everybody pretty much I hope knows how to solder, uh, but if not, uh, you know, you want to obviously tin your pads here, tin the end of your wires, so that way when you apply heat, it will go ahead and make everything join together a lot better. Uh, I have put on my battery lead on the back, and I have uh, went ahead and tinned up this 5 volt output here, and I have bridged uh, the 5 volt. Uh, jumper here because I am going to be using a TBS crossfire on this and that requires 5 volts of power. So the corner stuff here is all of the ESC connections. Up front here is all of the camera. Back here is all of the VTX. Um, crossfire requires 5 volts and ground which I am going to pull from these two pads right here and it also requires an RX and a TX on the same UART which I am going to be using oh what is that uh, number four I'm assuming it's going to be UART4 I'll have to check when we hook it up to Betaflight so that's all there uh, by the way the whole video series I'm going to do the whole thing we're going to go through Betaflight, BL Heli we're going to do all that stuff set everything up uh, the way that it needs to be, crossfire, um, smart audio, all that kind of stuff. So if you uh, run these type of products uh, versus running KISS or Immersion, um, that might be helpful. Um, if not, I don't know, maybe you might learn something, not sure. So, so since we have everything soldered up and ready to go on the flight controller, I guess what we can do is start mounting our motors. Um, this is uh, four millimeter arms. I'm going to have to be using eight millimeter uh, bolts, which I have used all the time. Uh, the good thing about these naked bottom type of motors is you can make sure that your bolt is not coming up and contacting any of your uh, windings. A lot of the newer motors I've seen, I think the T motors and stuff are actually coming with seven millimeter, which is basically just the perfect size because it, it really sets flush right there. So um, when it comes to mounting motors, I don't soft mount motors anymore. Um, on my F3 boards, I find that soft mounting worked a little bit better. Uh, but it seems like with F4 and running dynamic filtering and everything that you're constantly fighting the tune, at least I am, because you're always your motor bolts are always kind of coming back loose. And even though I would use a bicycle tube uh, rubber to mount, soft mount my motors, which doesn't compress as much as like the silicone or TPU type of stuff does, it still comes and has an issue. So it's just I find that I with with soft mounting this dynamic filtering everything is just fine so we're going to be using uh, those bolts and I've got some Loctite here somewhere using a blue thread locker and I'm just gonna everybody knows pretty much how to mount motors I'm gonna go ahead and mount 
uh, three of these bad boys down, and then I will do one and show everybody what that one looks like. So uh, we will be right back. All right, so lost the video on that uh, last motor on install, but basically all I would do is just take the bolt, put it on here, dip it in the Loctite, put it in, got them all secured on there, really good. Now I've went ahead and prepared all of the ESCs except one. I left one here. Now. The reverb has this lip right here where kind of everything goes together. So you kind of got to balance that a little bit. And I've noticed that there could be a possibility of my capacitor leads maybe hitting the frame right there. So I'm just trying to ward off any kind of issues right off the bat that I can see. So I'm just taking a little bit of electrical tape and I'm putting that just around the top of the ESC right there in the bottom for now. So just kind of insulating that a little bit there. And then I've got two pieces of sticky tape 3M adhesive back tape to mount the ESCs to keep them from flopping around and they're kind of uneven so I take one piece and I stick that right here at the top of the ESC where it kind of sticks down a little bit and then I take another piece here that's longer and I'll show you what I'm going to do here this piece I'm just gonna fold it over to double it up and then that is gonna go on this bottom section so that way I can mount the ESC's evenly and they're sticking on there nice and flush and then we'll finish them off with uh, some electrical tape and, and all that so now we can go ahead and solder up this last ESC. So we'll start with this last power wire here. There's our positive. Always try to start with a fresh tip for each big solder. Prime the tip a little bit more. And then this is going to be the negative pad. got that good sizzle so that's good it's pretty close to that positive battery lead down there I think I'm gonna rotate this over just a tad Always got to be watching out for some potential issues. All right, that's about as good as that's going to get. So now we got our ground and signal, and those are a little long. So we're just going to trim those down a little bit. Tack in the ground. Or try to at least. OK. 
Okay, there's that. And the signal. All right. There we go. So now we have our power lead and all of our ESCs wired up. Board looks pretty clean. I'm still gonna go over it with some isopropyl alcohol, um, but it looks pretty clean. There's not a lot of like conformal coating or nothing like that that is per se dripped off or anything. While we're here, we might as well do a continuity check. I also have a smoke stopper, but I always like to do this just at the beginning. So what we don't want to hear is this. So I always start by just testing the main outlet there. And so everything should be good. I'll leave that on the negative. And then I'll just kind of go around and hit all my negatives hit my positives make sure I don't have any issues so got con good continuity on all of our positives every once in a while you'll get a blip on a, ne on a negative and that is just because the capacitors are storing some voltage and besides checking all those you can always check your other uh, positive leads too and your grounds so like these ones that we've already tinned up on here let's say our uh, video transmitter ground we can check that nothing on the positive we can check our ground for our receiver. Nothing on the positive. And same for the camera. So, everything's looking good as far as the electronics go. We're all set up. The next thing uh, we are going to do is we're gonna go ahead and get the Crossfire installed and the VTX and kind of the camera. I want like a rough electronics install. So, cause what I like to do is have everything kind of at this point, all the electronics roughly installed, then take it to the computer, flash everything and make sure everything is set up and working the way that I want it to before I start doing like a final you know clean up with zip ties and extra electrical tape and just everything like that so just make sure that all that stuff uh, is working good uh, cause the last thing you want to do is put in everything down to the last bolt and plug this thing in and have there be a wire w wired up incorrectly and then you're kinda out of luck so crossfire coming right now <laughs> 